Irish Socialist Republicans spoke with a comrade and organiser based on the west coast of the so-called USA about mass work and organising that they're doing. What is mass work? The Communist Party of the Philippines say in a document, In our mass work, we arouse, organise and mobilise the masses of workers, peasant, semi-proletarians and particular sections of the petty bourgeoisie for the People's National Democratic Revolution. We also pay attention to distinct social groups such as women, youth, fisherfolk and national minorities who form the indigenous people and national and minority nationalities. Mass work is so important for the party's successful leadership of the revolution. The foundation of the revolutionary strength of the party and of the revolutionary movement is laid down through this work. The essential work is carried out in three principal tasks the formation of the party, the waging of the armed struggle, and the formation of the National United Front. The effective leadership of a proletarian party can be gleaned from the effectiveness of its mass work. The Communist Party of the Philippines continues by stating, What are the principal objectives of mass work? Our mass work has three principal objectives. The first is to form, consolidate and broaden the revolutionary unity and strength of the people through the establishment of the organs of democratic political power in accordance with the class line of the united front in the countryside, people's committees in the cities and mass organization and mass movements in the countryside and the cities. The second is to establish and consolidate the broadest and deepest foundations among the masses for the protracted people's war. The people's war cannot be advanced firmly without the strong support of the broad masses of the people. The third is to establish the broadest and deepest foundation for the formation of the party among the ranks of the people. The party's implementation of mass work accords with carrying out its central task in seizing political power. In this work, the broadest foundations of the United Front, the People's Army and the armed struggle and the formation of the party among the masses are prepared. We'll let this comrade introduce themselves and their organization. Yeah, my name is Red. I'm a uh, what's called a non-commissioned officer in our enlisted corps, um, the the tenth auxiliary uh, division, and uh, I am the leading enlisted uh, person in our organization. Uh, we serve a committee called From the Heart Pacific Northwest, um, and I am. The committee's chief of communications, logistics, and personnel. So I do I do a lot, um, but uh, basically I am responsible for moving stuff around, talking to people, um, and uh, making sure that our enlisted crew is, which is like all of our day to day workers and squad mates and whatnot, are kept happy and uh, supported and uh, organized. Um, and uh, we have been working in Seattle, Washington, USA, so so-called Seattle, Washington, USA, uh, for a long time. Um, the committee and I have been organizing together for 10 years, but our most recent organization and formation is six years old. Um, we started just handing out socks on the street and built a mandate from there and then built an organization around our mandate. Uh, and it's now called the Community Relief Corps. Uh, and uh, it, we have about eight officers and probably, I don't know, 16 or 16 or 18 enlisted people. Um, and we do 365 days of support for our houseless and low-income community uh, before the uh, pandemic. And uh, uh, during the pandemic now, we uh, do four days of food. Uh, we do... Uh, one day a month of survival supplies, um, and we're always and we're and we're actually building a strategic water supply of 4,000 bottles of water right now for our houseless community uh, to last them through the summer. And so that's so, so some of the stuff that we sort of get up to. But yeah, so that's who I am. Um, I've been an, I've been an organizer here in Seattle uh, in the surrounding communities for sheesh 15 years, I guess now. Um, and my chairwoman's been in the game for 11 years. So we got, uh, a long time between us. 
Uh, and, uh, yeah, so that's who I am and what we, what we get down on. Uh, and I'm just going to talk today, uh, with some of our experiences and sort of explain some of our homegrown methodologies for success, uh, in, in urban mass work. We first asked Red, what is mass work? Um, mass work is, um, the pro is a process of merging your political lens, whatever it happens to be, whatever your critical political lens happens to be, whether you're an anarchist or a Marxist Leninist or a Marxist Leninist Maoist or whatever, um, uh, the mass work is where you merge your concerns with the people. And so we take our general political knowledge and we merge it with the, with the particular, uh, knowledge of the working class people in our communities. Uh, and so you do that by going out and joining them in the events that mitigate their, that, that, man, that, um, mediate their life. Well, we, our theory is that, uh, people aren't radicalized by politics. They're not radicalized by books. People are politicized by, um, other people mediated by events, mediated by the world. And so, um, we believe that you have to go out into the community and be alongside people in the active work that they do in their active struggle day to day, uh, in order to not just get to know them and their struggle and not just to build your mandate, but to merge our, merge our interests together with the people actively every day, uh, in the act of meeting their needs, uh, on an everyday basis. Um, like for instance, um, our formation, uh, only works in like an eight square block radius. Uh, we build infrastructure just in this tiny little base building area, uh, because six years is brand, as a brand, we're a brand new formation essentially. Um, and so, uh, we focus because we're brand new and we're developing, we start very small and very smooth and very slow. Um, and we build up our, we build up, we literally do community development, right? So, yeah. <laughs> um, and so that's, so it's a, this constant process of not just building a mandate, but fulfilling a mandate and then getting a new mandate. And uh, we, there's like three basic steps. There's three basic flavors to this process. Uh, and that is, of course, dialogue expression and internal education and those are like the three basic flavors of mass work uh that you're going to do um there's like of course dialogue is when you're just either formally or informally talking with working class people on a day-to-day -day basis um an example of a formal dialogue session would be like investigation sessions that we do with houseless people where we come aside with them and we kind of talk over problems and try to find themes and find common themes and then investigate those themes together and then try to find uh, actions that we could take together to overcome the limits that we find from those themes. So we'll maybe watch a movie together or read a section from a book or a magazine article together with some houseless folks and examine that or we'll listen to an audio part of an audio book a chapter from an audio book and then talk to talk to each other about that and see what comes up and and we try to merge interests that way uh another another informally would be uh informally would be like when we're at our street relief program just down the street where my street relief people are at right now actually handing out sandwiches and fresh fruit and uh, basic needs stuff right now um uh, like at our street relief programs an informal dialogue would be when you're um, handing a houseless person uh, a pair of socks and a sandwich and they say, hey, you know, it'd be really nice if I had an emergency tent. And and you start to get start start getting to talk about emergency tents and the conditions that that uh, lead to them wanting these things. And, and then you start to build these, you start to build what we call a mandate and you start to expand that mandate by fulfilling needs and through reliability. Um, and so that's sort of where the informal dialogue comes from. And so you have dialogue, right? Uh, and then you have expression. Expression is our, uh, expression is your programs. What I tell people is expressions are, uh, are the fruit of your pro, of your, of your work, not the tree itself. The tree itself is the dialogue and the internal education of your formation. But the programs are, um, simply the fruit of your work. 
Um, it is the result of the work that you do in the community every single day um, that that uh, it rests upon. So uh, your your programs rest upon like the dialogues that you have with people in your everyday community. Uh, it's it's it rests upon the internal discussion and education of your formation. Um, and so it's uh, sort of a it sort of emerges out of those two processes um, to make that third process. Um, and internal education is exactly what it sounds like. Internal education is simply uh, the is simply that it's, it's uh, educating your formation. Um, and I specifically say uh, internal education because we do also do external uh, education programs, but that's not that's not a primary flavor. Um, the primary flavor always has to be line building, building that internal education and that internal line inside your formation, whatever that formation is. And there's a myriad reasons for building that line, and we can go into it at another time or maybe later on in this discussion. But, yeah, those are your three basic flavors, uh, internal education, expression, and dialogue. And that sort of builds your – builds the um, – sort of dialectic of your development of your formation in your community together and that's what mass work is mass work is the development of your formation simultaneous with the community development and emerging those two developments together into a class structure into a class organ um, so that there is no there is no way to say where my formation ends and where the community begins because there is no there is no separation. We are one and the same, um, and that's um, what we call the act of not doing. When you're trying to build a revolution, uh, the act of revolution builds in acts that are not revolutionary in nature. Um, feeding people is not the revolution, right? But without feeding people, there is no revolution. So it's not sufficient for the revolution, but it is an inherent part of the revolution, and so. Um, in that effect, we believe that uh, these these mass work and basic need programs um, are as important in class war as the marksman is in a material war, like a actual war. Um, they need to, we need to be able to deliver services and goods and people to places uh, and to other people um, with the same accuracy that a marksman does. And we think we believe this is is integral to class warfare and building working class power. The way we see it is that um, mass work allows us to fulfill needs and build basic class power so that we can build extraordinary class power so that we can build extraordinary class power. We say like the act of feeding each other every day and clothing each other every day puts us in a mo in a precondition to where we can be strong together when it's time to house each other. And then once we've housed each other and we've educated ourselves around the process of housing each other and we're and that methodology is shared, uh, we're that much stronger when we go to form the next level of organization and take something else for ourselves. Um, and so we really believe in going back to the basics and mass work is really focused on that. It's really focused on our leadership, returning to the basics. Um, returning to feeding people, housing people, clothing people, giving people the hygiene products they need, giving people the morale support they need, um, you know what I mean? Building confidence in people that they need to survive, um, giving people the social tools as well that they need to survive. Um, and we believe this is what creates the foundations for everything else. Um, we believe that it's sort of the... Um, the uh, the base of the revolution, whereas everything else, with all, the, the, the explicitly revolutionary stuff is sort of the superstructure of the revolution. We next asked Red to tell us about a failed mass work campaign and show us what this means for success. Okay. Um, okay, well, I'll give you a good example. Early, early in our organizing time together... Um, my, our chairwoman and myself ran an illegal, an illegalist soup kitchen. So everything, we stole every ounce of food that came out of it, that came into it. Um, I was, yeah, it was, uh, run on, run on felonies basically. And, um, it failed for numerous reasons. Um, among them that, uh, 
the methodology was simply not one that could be reliably taught to people um, and practiced by anyone. Um, it failed in ed in educating people. It failed in it was basically just adventuristic. Essentially, I mean, it was not something. It was not a toolkit that could be given to lots of other people and have it practiced broadly. Um, so it was it, though it had successes. It ultimately set our organizing back many, many years, like four or five years. The failure of it set us back years and years. Um, and out of, out of that failure, we realized that it, more important than more important than like attacking the state directly, we had to take a more and attacking corporations directly in order to get stuff done. We had to take a more what's the word? Um, more acquiescent, yeah, I guess that's that's fits. Uh, we call it we call it politics the politics of acquiescence, and so we had to take a more disciplined, slow, circuitous, and 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 um, meth methodical sort of approach. You know what I mean? And so we uh, coming out of that, we were like, oh, we never want to do that again. We got we we got uh, we caught a uh, yeah our lives were severely impacted by the failure of that program. Um, and so several years later, we're, we're in where we are now and we're starting a new format and we're starting to do outreach and we're starting to, we were just starting to really reflect, well, starting to finish reflecting on our failures and kind of finish licking our wounds. Um, so this is like six years ago now, six, almost seven years ago now. Um, we got inside again after being houseless and, blah, 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 all this and that, a lot of, a lot of hardship. And uh, we said, well, we can't stop fighting. We have to continue organizing and agitating. So what is it we're going to do? And we started to really think about it. And that's when our mutual meals program was born. After three years of outreach and dialogue uh, and internal education with our formation, with meager as it was, maybe two to five people at month to month, depending, um, we spent a lot of time just internally developing our ideas and really self-critiquing heavily, um, literally for years. I mean, we still did outreach and fed as many people as we could, but it wasn't organized. We really just focused on on um, making sure we were doing the right thing. Um, and what we learned from that was that we cut we we before we cut anything, uh, so to speak, we measure seven times. Uh, we work very slow now. We work very intentionally. We uh, uh, very disciplined, um, and it, and mutual meals then turned into a program called mutual movies, which developed over the, di over our dialogue with people over the, and our staff and our enlisted people, um, over the course of mutual meals and it turned into mutual movies. And then of course the pandemic hit and we were already, we were already building the logistics and transitioning towards sort of a, um, basic needs and, uh, basic needs and hygiene focused community program. And just by happenstance, that's happened, it happened to be what our community needed. And so we were already doing the, the common everyday, um, ordinary labor, um, that was needed to be successful in this pandemic. And it just led to, and so we just transitioned immediately and created this new new uh, service organization called the Community Relief Corps, the CRC, and it's been a phenomenal success, success for s almost seven weeks, seven weeks running now. Um, and uh, and so one of the things that I really want to emphasize is that failure is a natural part of doing things uh, and you need to you have to absolutely uh, embrace it. Uh, you must embrace your failure and then you have to embrace the critiques that come uh, along with it. Uh, I, I tell my I tell my list of people that critiques are a gift that's grown for you by someone that cares enough to do that to, and then plucks that flower, and brings it to you and hands it to you. That person could have walked away. They could have swore you off and just walked and disappeared and ghosted you forever. Um, and instead, they grew a critique for you in their minds and then brought it to you as a person. Uh, and you should accept that with grace and humility uh, and try to internalize that critique. Uh, success is built on a base of failure. 
Lasting success is built on your failures. Failure does not mean that you need to give up. Failure needs to me- means you need to reconsider your actions. Um, if you're running and you fall down and you scrape your knee, that's a critique from the concrete. It says, shape up, pal. And you can either stop running altogether uh, or you can learn to run better. And uh, there's only, the viability is only, there's only a viable solution there. Only one of those is viable. And it's the take the critique, learn to do better and improve yourself. Um, the not running is not, is not viable. What are you going to do in an emergency? You know what I mean? It just, it's limiting. It, that's not, a, it's not even a decision. You know, you just learn to run better. It's a necessity. Um, and so everything is built on it's not thing. You know, victory is, is, is built on, on, on losses. Um, success is built on failures. And so really try to keep this, stay away from that dualistic sort of, if I don't do everything correctly, if I'm not one whole package of a person, if my formation doesn't do everything correctly or meet every need, then it's not perfect. No, in fact, uh, history is made by lots of tiny, tiny, humble actions. Um, there's a, a famous dead person from a long time ago that said uh, it's you may think that you're capable of grandiose things but life is made of small things so and that's and that's I feel the same way about organizing success and organizing is built on the small things the grandiose things that you eventually might accomplish are built on revisiting the basic things constantly so and and revisiting in in revisiting your failures lots lots of self-reflection uh, but yeah, don't just don't give up. Like if if you make a program and it doesn't go according to plan and it and it and it and it just absolutely burns, um, you know, take the time that you need to recover from that. But ab- you must absolutely come back to the foxhole and, conti- and continue fighting the fight. Um, it's absolutely crucial. Um, and not only that, but you'll be stronger for it if you can face your failures and, and continue to come back. Uh, and fight, uh, you'll be stronger for it and your community will be stronger for it. Um, but if you flee from your failures and make excuses, get aggressive, uh, get defensive, if you um, get hubristic, if you get um, if you get uh, elitist or or author- not authoritarian in the in the in the in the in the inane sense that other people mean, but if you get uh, literally dependent on your authority by by you know either tenure or whatever on your expertise alone then you you know you should get a re, re, you know you got to self inspect a little bit um but yeah i think that's i think that's my whole answer for that what is the place of mass work within the revolution well, like I said earlier, it, mass work is the not work of the, rev, the not revolutionary work of the revolution. It involves a lot of stuff that isn't revolutionary. It involves feeding people, clothing people, housing people. And these things are not distinctly revolutionary acts. These things are just acts of people acting together. Um, uh, a lot of mass work is, is, is not revolutionary. And like I said, once again, the work of revolution, and I'm going to repeat this a lot, the work of revolution is built on top of and built on a foundation of not revolutionary work, distinctly not revolutionary work. Um, doing laundry is not revolutionary, but it needs. But laundry needs to be done for the revolution to happen. Cooking food for your neighbors is not revolutionary in any nature whatsoever. Um, there's no argument that can be made that makes it revolutionary. However, everything that is revolutionary is founded on people eating food. And so mass work is at its base a lot of stuff that doesn't seem revolutionary on its face distinctly. And you're going to have to cope with that. Um, uh, and, that and I think that's how it fits. I think that's very much how it fits into the revolution is um, exposing this sort of underbelly, the soft underbelly of revolution is that, you know, I mean, people need to eat and go to the bathroom. They need their garbage moved around. Um, and these are the things, getting these things done is what frees people up to partake in the revolution. Their revolutionary activity is founded on these things. Um, if, if, if every individual in our society has to do all their, everything for them strictly selves, like capitalists would like us, it leaves us very little time 
to uh, get revolutionary activity done. But when we collectivize our activities, when we work together um, and we get this common stuff done together, it frees us all up to take action. It frees us all up to do self-critique. It frees us all up to do other things that are more fulfilling and more distinctly revolutionary. That's great, Jeff. Um, I think I think that's I think that's basically how it fits in. Everything else, everything else is ideology. Basically, everything else is uh, uh, everything else is just organizing. It's you can learn that stuff anywhere, but the basis of it is is it's always going to be returning to the basics. We finally asked for some final thoughts for us to bear in mind when we are conducting mass work. It needs to be dialogue focused. Um, once again, we, we get, we get really focused on programs. Um, and, uh, programs are not the work. Program, the programs that you have are not the actual work that you do. The programs are not the tree, they're the fruit. The tree, once again, is that, is the, is the common work you do alongside your neighbors every day, planting gardens, make starts in your greenhouse, um, going down and, and doing grocery programs uh, or going down and just feeding your neighbors and whatnot, uh, just whatever, whatever the work is, whatever the common work is that you do alongside other people is the real work that you do. Um, that's what really these, everything is founded on relationships. This world is run on relationships. It's built by relationships and it's relationships that we have to fight and build. So there's, you know, of course, positive and negative relationships, the relationship between us, our boss, and capital is an extractive relationship, uh, and it needs to be destroyed. But we can't fight it. We can't shoot our way out of a relationship. We have to relation our way out of a relationship. Right? Am, am I wrong? Is that is that incorrect? <laughs> but uh, 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 I hope I'm not incorrect. But but um, so. The real work is being out alongside people in need and fulfilling those needs alongside them and being with them through their struggles. Uh, that's what builds faith from the working class in our movement is, is them witnessing us, witnessing them. The, the, the faith in our movements comes from reliability and being amongst the people. Um, they want to see us. Houseless people want to see us there, giving them food and stuff. They want to see us there. Um, uh, people on the shop floor, they want to see you there. They want to hear you. Um, they want you your material support. They want you behind them, supporting them when they're the ones doing the work to protect themselves and form a union or whatever, uh, or just protect themselves against predatory bosses. Um, these positive relationships are our means out of these negative relationships that we have. These positive relationships are these tiny molecules of the new world that we build in order to get out of the old world, right? And out of this tiny molecule of the old world that we exist in. It's the same as building that new world we want to live in before we destroy the larger, more general world that we live in. We have to do that in our lives as well. Um, and so we have to, uh, we have to be creating little bits of that new world that people can step into and away from those negative social relations that they have to endure every single day. And that's what the programs make space for, but that's not the work. The work is out in the world with people. And so um, just really, when, we, when, I think, when you think about mass work, I really want you to think about going back to the people and being amongst them, being amongst them not it was no agenda not as a conqueror not as an ideologue not as even as a leader but as a student alongside them just trying to learn how you can help and helping where you can uh in meager minor ways that you probably don't think are even important and would never think about um but through your mandate you will discover these tiny things that people value um and by meeting them you will build faith in your movement and faith in your formation uh, and that, and, and that's what we mean when, uh, mass work means doing a bunch of non-revolutionary work on its face.
It's pulling the bowstring back so that you can fire the arrow. It's go. It's walking away so that you can charge ahead. It's pulling the fist back so you can throw the punch. It's uh, taking the charge so you can leap the gap. It's um, running to get water so you could put out the fire. You see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? 